the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings to you all in the most precious name of our common Lord Jesus Christ. And this morning we meditate upon a very pertinent and a very meaningful theme of the transfiguration of Christ. The transfiguration of Christ, the manifestation of the glory of Christ. In fact, uh, yesterday, that means on Thursday, we celebrated the Transfiguration Festival. I still recall when I took some pastors to Holy Land. And it so happened that one of the days, perhaps it's the same day on the 6th of August, we were taken on to Mount Tabor, where it is, you know, big crowds were there. And it was so difficult for us to, you know, go up as there was shortage of taxis because thousands of people were there. And our guide informed us that that day it was the celebration of transfiguration. And it was in the hold of the Greek Orthodox Church and, you know, with all their, you know, ecclesiastical vestments and the priests were leading uh, the procession and we couldn't really, you know, go inside the church. We waited until almost the late afternoon and the crowds were slowly, you know, diffusing. And then we were allowed to go inside the church, the Transfiguration, Mount Tabor, where Jesus took three of his disciples, the inner circle of the Master, the Lord, Peter, James, and John. And there he was transfigured, simply it says. But then there was a small explanation on that. Can I read this small passage taken from the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 9 verses 28 follow. Now about eight days after this had been said with him, Jesus took with him Peter, John and James and went up the mountain to pray. As he prayed, the aspect of his face was changed and his clothing became brilliant as lightning. Suddenly there were two men there talking to him. They were Moses and Elijah, appearing in glory and they were speaking of the passing which he was to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were heavy with sleep but they kept awake and saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As these were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is wonderful for us to be here, so let us make what he was saying. Three tents, one of you, one for you, one for Moses and one for Eliza. He did not know what he was saying. As he spoke, a cloud came and covered them with the shadow. And when they went into the cloud, the disciples were afraid. And a voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son, the chosen one. Listen to him. And after the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. The disciples kept silence. And at that time, told to one what they had seen. These disciples told no one what they had seen. This is the word of God. Friends and my co-believers, the context of this passage was that it uh, was preceded with a couple of uh, important events in the, in the uh, narration of the New Testament, in particular in the Gospels. In Mark's Gospel, this event was preceded by the feeding of 5,000. 
a Lux glass well feeding of 4,000. They retained seven baskets of the crumbs of the friends. And then it was again preceded by the Lord taking his disciples after this feeding event was over, quite possibly for a retreat onto the Caesarea Philippi, the northern tip of Sea of Galilee, and at the foot of uh, Mount Hermon. Caesarea Philippi also was a small you know, kind of mount, a little mount, I would say. And from there, Jesus showed probably what was happening, the busy, bustling uh, uh, scene of the people around the northern tip of Sea of Galilee because it's a very strategic place from north it is from Syria, from south you know, Egypt, from west it is from Lebanon today, what was it, Tyre and Sidon and uh, the east from Jordan. All north, south, east, west people were gathering, particularly the entrepreneurs, the business people with their commodities. They take rest there. There are some inns to stay and the camels and horses were kept there for the, you know, to quench the thirst. There is plenty of water uh, at the shore of Sea of Galilee. And that is the place where they exchange their currency, they exchange their culture, their language, even exchange of politics, knowing each other about the other country's information. So it is there a lot of you know business crowds. From the small mound of Caesarea Philippi, the disciples could see people like small you know creatures. But they could listen what, you know, the crowds cannot listen what disciples were, were talking. But they could see them on the movement of the mountain. It is there Jesus was talking about, you know, questioning, you know, who he was. Peter immediately responded, Simon Peter, saying, you are the Christ, son of the living God. Perhaps for the first time, from among the disciples who could discover Jesus as the Christ and the Messiah, whether consciously or unconsciously, that was first time in the Gospels probably a uh, kind of uh, recognition was ascribed to the personhood of Jesus. Of course, Jesus did not give much importance to that saying. He hushed it saying because the time was not right. Many things had to happen there later on. And then, he took the disciples from there to another mountain, from Caesarea Philippi, from one small mountain to another mountain called Tabor. Tabor, uh, the Hebrew meaning itself, is the pinnacle of a mountain. The meaning, Hebrew word for mountain is Har, Har, H-A-H-R, Har. But the pinnacle of a mountain is Tabor. And uh, Jesus took them there, and there, surprisingly, again the same three disciples, his inner circle, Peter, James, and John, whom he took uh, to Peter's mother-in-law's place where he healed her, and where, you know, he healed uh, Jair's daughter, you know, at Capernaum. Uh, like that, you know, he took only these three, and um, not knowing the reason why other disciples were not mentioned here, but these three disciples were with him. But there, what happened? They could witness a very, very, uh, you know, crucial and an important uh, attestation, the divine attestation that Jesus was, uh, you know, son of God. Jesus was uh, son of God. That was the divine attestation, as I said. The three places which are recorded where divine attestation of Jesus, you know, was pronounced. Firstly, soon after the baptism in Mark, first chapter, eleventh verse, and in uh, Luke's gospel, third chapter, twenty-second verse, and at the time of baptism, the uh, Holy Spirit came in the form of the dove, and people 
bystanders could listen the voice, the divine voice that he is my beloved son, listen to him. At the second event, a very important event here today is our meditation on transfiguration on Mount Tabor. And again in the cloud, they are going to listen to this voice. This is my son chosen. Listen to him. The third event, the centurion himself at the closure of the event of the cross in Luke chapter 9, verse 35. And he also says, the centurion, Truly this man was God's son. It is not this time divine attestation, divine attestation, but it's the human expression out of a faith, a new found faith, a new experience, with a new vision. This centurion was saying, truly this man was God's son. Mark 15 chapter verse 39. These are the three events in which Jesus was discovered as the Son of God. You know, we, the, we also see importance of some mountains in Israel. Very rich on each mountain there is, you know, an important event to place. You know, firstly, we know the the experience of uh, you know Ararat, Mount Ararat, where the Noah's Ark was landed after 150 days. Mount Ararat. Uh, which of course they say that it is somewhere near in Russia now. Uh, the second mountain which is mentioned here is uh, Mount Moria. Mount Moria is the place where Abraham you know, takes his son Ishaq or Isaac to offer him uh, to please God at his uh, command. Moria on which today uh, the Dome of the Rock has been built. It is in the center of city of Jerusalem. And uh, the third one, of course, uh, the third mountain is Mount Sinai, a very historic, very divine, and the tallest of all the mountains which I've explained now, wherein uh, Moses was called there, you know, he went up to see uh, where the burning bush it was somewhere in the middle of the mountain. But then, where he is encountered by God, Yahweh, El Shaddai, where God called him to give him a mission or a commission, that is Mount Sinai. A portion of the mountain is called, of course, Horeb. You will see that in Genesis 8 chapter. And Mount Pisgah, of course, it's where Moses, you know, the exit of Moses was mentioned. And then Mount Tabor, our present uh, scene. Mount Olivet, where on the foot of Mount Olivet, the valley of Kedron, the river Kedron would be flowing. A small mountain which we have not discussed yet, uh, left out is Mount Gerizim, a small mountain like uh, Caesarea Philippe, uh, Gerizim, we all know that where opposite to Mount Ebal, uh, between uh, these two mountains, the valley uh, is Baraha Valley, you know, the valley of blessings, you know, ba valley of uh, blessings, Baraha, Barakat, Mubarak, uh, all these words come from, you know, blessing, Daiva Shivadam, Mubarak, Baraka. So anyway, that's where a Samaritan encounter with Samaritan woman took place. These are the mountains, the story of mountains. Jesus took his disciples to Mount Tabor. Perhaps a kind of retreat was taking place for these three disciples. And disciples witnessed in this place extraordinarily the demonstration of God's power on this mountain. The manifestation of the divine, you know, power around Jesus on this mountain. You know, disciples, these three have witnessed, you know, the other events together along with Jesus. Like that of, I told a daughter 
and other places and uh, the, of course later on they will be there with Jesus at uh, you know the garden of Gethsemane uh, wrestling uh, when Jesus was wrestling with the cup that lies before him in Gethsemane Matthew 14 chapter now I come back to the context after six days means the journey between uh, Caesarea of Philippi and to Tabor it took six days in Exodus 24 chapter we will find Moses went up to Mount Sinai perhaps to get God's appointment as he was waiting a cloud was you know surrounding him or overshadowing him and he rested in cloud for six days and then on seventh day God called Moses out of the cloud very important you know all these numbers all these crucial events you know we don't know who recorded unless Moses himself dictated 24th Exodus 24th chapter and 15th verse it is recorded that the glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai and the cloud covered it for six days on and on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the cloud I tell you it is dreadful to journey through these mountains it so happened I and my group journeyed on a very comfortable bus for about 400 miles not kilometers towards south you know towards Egypt and as we were traveling in fact we were to go to St. Catherine where morning bush was there and to see that place we had to travel 400 miles and uh, the both left side and right side on the journey you find nothing except the mountains tall and taller and tall rest side Sinai mountain there is no greenery at all on the mountains very unwilling to see the kind of ash color you know mountains it's not water falling down but it is some kind of ash or dust falling Totally it is dry so you don't find an instinct insect because there is no you know kind of uh, humidity and since there are no insects there are no small animals to eat them as there are no small animals you cannot expect the big wild animals to come so it is totally a wide place no life so what do you see after a hundred kilometers miles probably we have covered uh, curtains because there is no interest in sea. Mind you, for 40 years Moses took them round and round and round through these mountains. I feel that it was not that they could not find the way out. But perhaps it was God's intention that a particular generation was to simply move around the desert places in the midst of these mountains and that generation of this slavery must not come into the promised land. It is totally a fresh generation who would not physically remember their slavery back home. It is a very sad thing that Moses was also not allowed that long. Once they crossed the Red Sea, Moses had to stay back. I feel sorry about, humanly sorry. It was new leader, Joshua, who guided these people. Anyway, move on to the present context there. On Mount Sinai, all alone, in the midst of, you know, such a tall mountain, then what I am trying to say is there is no life, no creatures, no insects, no animals. Live alone humans, Moses alone. Friends, as I go through the Old Testament and of course the transition between OT and New Testament, I found three great prophets in the scripture. Number one, Moses. 
a great prophet god personally calls him talks to him not that moses was great but god made moses great a very powerful leader though a person who was so kind of uh, uh, with inhibition he was not able to uh, understand the mission of god who expresses his inability to perform what god wanted him to do that carry this message to pharaoh but god transformed him god changed him as a mighty instrument in the hands and then god used him for the historic exodus a very momentous event the departure of israel from the land of slavery into land of promised land of canaan a shrewd far sighted leader who led people for 40 years a man of perseverance a man of perseverance and with a lot of uh, what is it called meticulous and uh, conscientious conscientious spirit he led the hebrews for 40 years he remained as a lawgiver you know 40 days and 40 nights he had to spend all alone may imagine how many men and women could really spend individuals could spend on a place like that without any company no one knows what he drank what he ate 40 days and 40 nights the quarantine experience of moses wherein god gave the two tablets you know carving the 10 commandments that the kalog into the hands of moses with greater confidence fulfillment moses was coming down contrary to his expectation the people were full of sin there forgetting the living god who brought them out of this slavery they made a golden calf and then started making a jubilation moses hither to was appealing to god not to be angry with these people who were rebelling people groaning grumbling people but today moses got angry but god called him don't be angry come back again you know moses came back again at another quarantine quarantine phase 2 like our lockdown phase 2 lockdown phase 3 moses went again for quarantine again 40 days and 40 nights you will find this in exodus 34 chapter friends diligence in delivering god's commandment and this time again he got the law that is why symbolically moses was called as the lawgiver a humble person but with untiring efforts and powerful personality with his perseverance he became a great leader great prophet the second prophet whom i can never ignore is prophet elijah elijah you know all these people have 30 years age moses elijah the third important prophet for me great prophet even jesus himself said there is no other greater prophet than john what a certificate you need more than that again 30 years and it's not out of place to mention that lord jesus himself came to his ministry at 30 probably the age is very crucial and alisa a fearless prophet a fearless prophet one of the three radical prophets like moses john the baptist outstanding prophet i would say eliza to deliver god's mission to rejuvenate rejuvenate the people of israel he was there between joshua and jehovah and baal god and mammon he chose god and you cannot serve the two masters as jesus said elijah challenged israel on this theocentrism no other god stood 
from the Therefore, Moses and Eliza are the two representatives symbolizing the law and the prophets. It is such courageous prophets, both of each experience, they were there alone with God. Alone with God. They stood, you know, before God. These are the two prophets came to talk to Jesus on Mount Tabor. I have given a little elaborate explanation that why these two came because the exit also was mysterious that Eliza, you know, he was not buried on earth. A fiery chariot came from heaven to take him up and the end of Moses also was not very clear. It only says that none you know, has witnessed the death of Moses except they say that Moses died because he disappeared. Their relation with El Shaddai, all alone, they came here. Quite possibly, they came here to prepare Jesus for this very important and crucial, the decisive and unique mission of the cross. And it is here, Jesus got the Greek word used here in the text, the original text is uh, metamorphete. Morphe is change, but it need not be a physical change, but it can be also an inner change. The English word metamorphosis comes from that word metamorphose or morphe. The English word transfiguration, transformation are the words which are used in our Gospels. And then the disciples observed the Jesus' face after the conversation with two celestial great people, great prophets. Prasio Kastai, Prasio, the face was changed, so radiance. Could not see the face of Jesus. Even when Moses was coming down with taking the tablets of Decal of the Ten Commandments, he covered his face because they couldn't see his face, the radiance around the face. And Jesus, they could see, you know, his clothes were so dazzling. I have translated that in the, for the Senate of Serampur examination from Greek, you know. No washerman on earth could bleach as white as the exceeding white of, you know, Jesus' clothes. Exceeding white, dazzling white, the glorious white. Friends, Jesus was talking. Perhaps the two great celestial creatures came here to comfort him and encourage him about you know, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Both figures were qualified to speak about the mysterious end of Jesus because both experienced mysterious conclusions. Friends, as disciples could not really witness everything what happened, they were slightly dozing, sleeping, which represents the sleeping church, sleeping Christianity. It says the disciples were weighed down with sleep, dozing. They were in subconscious spirit. They could see probably Moses and Eliza or they could listen the conversation somewhere, you know, going into their mind, but they were in a sleepy mood. Like that of the church. Every week we listen to the word of God, yes, but whether it goes into the mind, whether it pricks us, whether it really gives any, brings any effect within our lives, like that of the disciples. Then, while coming, Peter said, Lord, it is wonderful to be here alone. Kalon in Greek is, it is beautiful to be here. It is so pleasant. It is wonderful to be here. Let me, let us make three tabernacles, three tents, three booths. Otherwise, skenai, the Greek word skenos is used again at the time of incarnation of Jesus. The word became flesh and flesh became the tent, the booth, the tabernacle around the word of God. Skenostic, you know, event, incarnational event. Here it is used with the skenai, 
the three tents one for Jesus, one for Moses, and one for Eliza. When you go on to the Tabor, Tabor and you find, you know, the, the two uh, uh, you know, pictures on the two altars, one, one for dedicated to Moses, one dedicated to Eliza on Mount Tabor on the church. Friends, everything that happened, Moses was on Mount Sinai, Eliza was on Mount Carmel and with Jesus they are there on Mount Tabor. God of mountains, El Shaddai, El Elohim, God Shaddai. You know, a person of powerful, mighty, like a rock, Shaddai, El Shaddai. Disciples, uh, you know, had to hold two truths about Jesus. The mysterious tension. On one hand, Jesus was son of God, as chosen one, it recalls Gabriel's annunciation to Mary, the two-stage explanation to Mary at the annunciation of his birth, Luke, Luke 1, verses 32 to 33, and again on 35, you know, the one, the most high, again and again Gabriel repeats, only to give the exalted, you know, state of the birth of Jesus, overshadowing cloud on the table, on the transfiguration mount, which means symbolizing the very presence of God, overpowering of the spirit of God. You know, the word, Greek word it is used here is epi, skiatsian means, epi means from above, shadow, covering, overshadowing. It is exactly the same word used by Gabriel. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you in the Annunciation. It refers to overshadowing of Mary by the Holy Spirit to bring about the conception of Jesus in Luke 135. And at baptism also, this anointment also is equivalent to overshadowing. Dear friends, it is the, you know, bringing them out to keep them awake from the sleeping mood, the church must come out for yet another experience to receive the Holy Spirit as the anointing spirit, as a overshadowing spirit. The other aspect I want to see is the spirituality of the church from sleeping mood to the awakening of the spirituality. They were having private conversation, Moses, Eliza and Jesus on Mount Tabor. Always private conversation is very crucial in the history of religion. Anywhere, Abraham was speaking to God. Jacob was, you know, in private conversation, of course, wrestling on uh, River Zabak. And here, Jesus was having a private conversation, many times for that matter. Whenever he was alone, he found time to go and spend in his loneliness with God. Moses was in his loneliness with God. Elijah in loneliness with God. You know, Silla Lontus, the Greek word that is used is from Silla Lane, is to be alone with God. Exodus 3rd, 4th, 34 and 35. Speaking to God, a private, spiritual and a, a, a personal experience which they have exercised. Spiritual exercise, sadhana, the adhyatmic sadhana. Church and believers need this spirituality in the cave of the heart, as Swami Abhishekananda said. Friends, I quickly would like to close, conclude this transfiguration, also not of the physical nature. We also should understand the transfiguration of, of the faith of the disciples. Change of the perception of God. Suddenly they heard, This is my beloved son, listen to him. Oh, they came out of the sleep. Sleep. My observations on transfiguration. Point A. A revelation of Jesus' divine status. God's personal and costly involvement to encounter the evil in the world. The second observation is from now onwards. 
Jesus is to undergo or he enter into most deeply into the you know pain and suffering mark 10:45 he talks about the passion and when he talks about disciples you know the condition of following one has to renounce himself take up his cross and follow him day after day and my third observation is the soteriological purpose the purpose of salvation the celestial meeting is a preparation for salvific event of cross of course the resurrection the power of jesus it was misunderstood otherwise you know why peter says three tabernacles this misunderstood kingdom of god has to be understood in the words of jesus friends it is here we need to we are called to understand the ethos and the the crux of the core message of transfiguration it is calling us to transform our faith transmutation is another word transfiguration is another word transformation all these words call us a change in our heart a change in our heart said paul says we leave the old man and we take up the new man it is like not just changing a shirt a new shirt or a new saree but it is changing a new mind a new behavioral pattern a new act of god a new mind in accordance to the line of jesus the sacrificial mind of jesus from it is in this context the transfiguration has to be understood for a new spirituality for spiritual living out the spiritual values in the world every christian every believer is given an opportunity during this period we don't have much time to do outside today the last 150 days what big things did we do did we waste our 150 days inside the closed doors did we make use of this time it's a golden opportunity live alone the sorrow live alone the grief live alone the, the events of death around us yes we do admit the fact of the sorrow and loss of life we do pray for the bereaved ones and we are also insistently praying to keep us safe from the you know clutches of the pandemic we are insistently praying the spirit to drive away this pandemic from the human culture all together but at the same time an opportunity for us within the closed doors as families as individuals find our lonely time the private time still alone to a private time face to face person to person a heart to heart talk with god we may listen to the still voice of the resurrected lord maybe through the scripture today you may not all all of a sudden appear you know god's appearance on mount like on mount sinai it may happen it can happen but today practically speaking the reality we can listen the voice of god through the scripture if we are person to person in our private conversation with god the meeting time with god the spiritual time with god and he is there in our midst let us begin to feel you know that very mystical and spiritual experience the event of transformation in our life may our faith be deepened because of this experience of transformation with jesus the resurrected one let us pray lord of grace lord of life father of our lord jesus christ lord we seek this personal time the private time with you like that of moses eliza great champions of faith lord we are very humble we can't compare ourselves to them in our faith but oh lord we can understand and read the ethos the mystery of the meeting with jesus 
on the mount tabor the mountain experience the lonely experience with you may we receive a new form of spirituality in our lives wherein we feel you in the cave of our heart the spiritual never ever forgot experience with you give us such blessings and peace in jesus name we pray amen